With Power of the Element being released this weekend, I figured it's time we talk about some reprints that are in order. These will be meta staples for the most part, but I have a few interesting entries here and there for some tech cards that are kind of necessary or just haven't been printed in a long time. So let's get down to it. Now the first card I'm going to talk about is Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. Now this card isn't particularly that expensive, but I feel like assuming that this is a good card for invoke decks and decks of the like where they rely a little more on control and stun, this is the perfect card to basically give the one super rare reprint that could ultimately bring this card down to the point where it's like you can't even use the argument that you can't afford it to basically get a copy. About as simple as that, it's your typical Omni Negate for monster effects. You know, you can activate it multiple times a turn as long as you have 800 attack points to take out. Ultimately, I feel like this is a good card to reprint and just give everyone access to it. The next card on the list is going to go to Borload Savage Dragon. I talk about a card that literally predates the current Master Rule format. Very interesting that set to staple for Dragon Links has only been reprinted twice and you can't get a copy for under $20. It should be very clear as to why this card should probably have a super reprint for no other reason beyond the fact that it's only been reprinted twice, been out as long as it has been, and it still retains a $25 value. Now this is the point on the list that we really start to get down to the real stuff, because now that we've talked about one of the uh, main antagonist monsters, we got to talk about the main protagonist of ranged monsters. That's Access Code Taka. Talk about just a very good card in general. Anytime it activates its effects, your opponent can't do nothing about it. They gotta just sit there and watch. The only timing they can take to affect Veiler is before they activate the second effect or after it's been summoned. That's what makes this card very good. And the fact that we only have two reprints and you gotta spend at least $50 on it, enough of a reason to give it a reprint. Again, this is probably something that should be a $25 reprint. I'm just saying. Now think about this though. I'm surprised this card hasn't been released in like a set yet. You know how they do those sets where they have the main protagonist's decks from like certain anime? You know, the Yugi Legendary decks. I'm surprised they haven't come out with a Vrain Legendary decks and just put this and Vorload Savage right into it. It would be an easy sell. Come on, Kami, I just gave you a pretty good idea. It's free, just take it. Come on, just do it. All right, let's talk Change of Heart. Now, talk about a card that's literally just kind of come to light within the last ban list. Literally a card that's been banned since like the dawn of Yu-Gi-Oh. Now available, but they haven't reprinted it in so long, it's so hard to find copies. Now, as you can see, the Yu-Gi starter decks were probably some of the most common things to ever get around. So fortunately enough, there's plenty of like singles in terms of that. And this isn't particularly on the list simply because it's expensive, because it isn't. It isn't expensive at all. It's just something that hasn't been reprinted since, I think, Yugi's World, if I remember right. I probably don't, so don't quote me. But nonetheless, you're literally talking about a card that literally targets and just takes the monster for free. We've literally had formats where a card called Mind Control was so good, they had to limit it to one. So now not only do we have Mind Control at one, we got Change of Heart to one. Oh, by the way, rip uh, Brain Control. But yeah, we need a reprint. I'm sure it's coming. I know it's probably coming. It's got to at this point, unless they, for some reason decide to ban it again but yeah change of heart guys you see this shit right here what the hell am i looking at so to start this card has a fascinating history in terms of the set that it came from. By the way, it's only been printed in that set ever, which is very interesting. But nonetheless, the set has a history with the Konami and Upper Deck scandal where the sneak peek didn't even happen until months after it originally was supposed to. Because there was a whole dispute with uh, Upper Deck making fake cards. A bunch of videos and online essays you can find about that. I'm not here to talk about that. What I am here to talk about is, you see that fucking price tag? Why the hell is this card $55? Well, I'll tell you why, because it's never been reprinted. It's literally it. This card is literally being used in branded decks, I guess. I don't know like, how exactly it works. I think it has to do with one of the trap cards. But when I see a card like this, and I see that, like, Axis Code Talker has had a reprint, but is literally, like, a couple dollars short from this card still, that's when you know there's something wrong with the world. Yeah, this is solely on the list just because this is fucking ridiculous. This card should be 89 cents. In fact, if it wasn't for branded, it would be like under a buck. Just fucking reprint it. Now we literally just got a reprint of Forbidden Droplets, but 
It is kind of lame that if you want three copies of a card that is, depending on the deck you're playing, unnecessary, I think we need a super printing of this card. Not too much of a big deal, but still. If you want cheaper alternatives, I guess I would suggest you use Midden Chalice, a card I've been using for years. But nonetheless, yeah, give it a super printing so uh, no one has to complain about the price. That's it. Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. The Link Climbing Kaiju everybody asked for? Yeah. So this card debuted not too, too too long ago, but despite that, I think it's time for a reprint. Assuming we got like uh, upcoming metas that sort of negates Nibiru, you know, I'm referring to the Splite combo. So I think it's about time this got a reprint, you know. It would only be its first reprint, so you would reasonably think it'll probably just be an Ultra. That'd be fine. It's not even that expensive in hindsight, so give it an Ultra printing and it would be what Appaloosa costs currently. Alright, Pot of Prosperity. Now, not my personal favorite pot card, uh, pot card, but something that ultimately needs a reprint came in the same set as Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. I'd say this is it's about time considering it's over a hundred dollars. To me personally it isn't even worth that value. Most of my decks want to OTK or they want to kill you as quick as possible. You know the combo aggro strategy. It's about time this got an ultra rare printing. You know maybe shed this down to what Axis Code Talker is currently. That's pretty much all I got to say about it. You know banish three to five cards, reveal three, pick up one, and then uh, half the damage. A lot of stipulations to draw two these days, huh? Alright, time to have some fun. So, this card indefinitely needs another reprint. Not just because of its price, obviously, leading to a $50, $60 price tag. But it really is one of those things where, like, you absolutely need it if you play aggro. Like, you need to be able to counter the background. Whether it be skill drain, or better yet, people's favorite, the Mystic Mind. Or counter traps. Hell, if they got three Judgment in their deck, they can already negate it. This card takes out both front and back. But back row removal is all the more necessary. Necessary. While we have Raigeki at 3 and that isn't so much of a concern, being able to out the mine is key in aggro. Definitely a card we should probably have more reprints of, make it a little cheaper for people who absolutely need it. Alright, it's time. This will not only contain a card, but an entire line of product that this card was featured in. And just by saying that, you could probably already guess what I'm going to be talking about. And that's going to be Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Oh yeah, talk about a card that was released five years ago, has had multiple reprints, and yet even a common copy of this card is a $25 bill. That's absolutely insane, but it just tells you the power of this hand trap, where it just stops anything your opponent might try to do to gain consistency. But it isn't just this card alone. No. The entire Soul Burner structure deck needs a reprint. That's right. I remember a time when they would reprint sets and structure decks multiple times and put them out on Walmart. Can we get those times back, please? Because those are literally the days where getting cards from certain sets was not as difficult. Now, to understand what I mean is to understand what this product was for its time and what it is today. Now it's just a simple relic. But before it was a simple relic, it was a literal set you could buy and pick up at any Walmart. Pick it up, buy three of them, and then build, you know, not just have a good copy of Ask Blossom and Joyous Springs, but you also got a very good deck out of it. As a matter of fact, the deck topped the worlds that year. Salomon Greats? Yeah. Like, you're talking about a set that should be everywhere, though. Like, if you look on Amazon right now, you can't find a copy of this set for under 60 bucks. Like, why did they stop reprinting this? If they just mass produced this and just threw it in every Walmart and Target in existence, I guarantee you people would buy them. It would wouldn't matter if you flood the market with common ash blossoms. As a matter of fact, that's the only way you can actually get this card to be lower than what it currently is. Because if you just give it another reprint, it's just going to stay the same. The card is a testament to the Yu-Gi-Oh meta for the last five years, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So I think it's time not only to really have an ash blossom reprint, but reprint this whole structure deck. Give everyone access to this Salomon Great deck that's still very popular even today. It might not be like the meta, but it's still a rogue contender. Everybody and their kids should have access to this set. There's no excuse for this. So I propose if we need one reprint out of everything I mentioned today, it is the Soul Burner Structure Deck. Get on it, Konami.